it's totally awesome fishing time again. This time we're going straight out on the boat with Wade, straight into the fish. It is, it's, it's, it's really cold out there and I hate the cold, but we got some fish. He's up near the surface, so Wayne's hooked up here. Turn that round. Tide's going pretty well. He's got a fish on this time. Eel or ray, and I've yeah. money's on a eel. My fish is a conger. I think a cod would come in a bit deeper, would it, Wayne? Get the angle of the line, not necessarily. No, they tend to. They tend to stay down, and the, the fight is more sluggish. Noddy, you know, sort of heavy but sluggish. And eels and rays, for that matter, tend to kite up if there's any sort of tide. Eels, the fight is more violent and jerky and aggressive. Obviously, they can swim backwards, so they, yeah, they're probably uh, trying to do that. As yeah, you know, he's called him, he's spinning, spinning in the tide. Well, We've done well to avoid it. It was only second one of the day so far, but I did feel they were going to come in. At the moment, here on the south coast, there's nothing you can do about them. They are carpet in the bottom. Plague proportions, you reckon? Yeah, they really are. And, and literally, I've just, I've just, that's the one with that little black map that I put on. I've literally just thrown it out this, this instant. Say to anyone, when a T-bar and any weight of weight of a fish, or even a dogfish for that matter, put a glove on, because even this mono, this is probably 50 pound or 70 pound trace I'm using. And if you if you take the wrap, which you have to, if you haven't got a glove on, that will cut right into your flesh. It's happened to me countless times. So and there you go. There's Mr. Uh, Wrigley. Uh, hopefully, there's the hook. There he goes. Right guys, got a bite on Frank here, the old Franken rod. This is a new cork but look at that, it looks like a real fishing rod now. Let's just see if there is anything on that. Yeah, yeah, Probably I'm dogfish. Well, Let's just watch that. So we've only been in a little while. It's getting near slack water, so I figured this is the time to... Oh! Frank's on! <laughs> Frank's on. <laughs> on the Frank <laughs> Got a fish on my on the, got a fish on the old Frank and what always he come on. Probably a doggy. He's small, I guess it's a dogfish. Now how big a fish can this take guys? I'm well pleased with it at the moment. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, look at this. Hey, Wayne, on the old Frankenrod. <laughs> it's on the Frankenrod. <laughs> Wait, well, did say there's some congas here. This one's interesting. I think he's only got one eye. See it? I think he's only got one eye, but he's definitely he's definitely throated that. That's a nice conger on that rod, you know. He's definitely got one eye. So one eye conger this one. Yeah, because it's the rod he's caught on. He's throated that. Well, I was going to leave this one down for live bait, boys, but I think it's a bit big. That's a decent one. And that one didn't take the stinger hook. Look, it's weird. I've got the little stinger hook at the back there. There's a stinger hook. That's stripped as well. Oh, look, he's coughed up, Wayne. Ah. Sprat. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it looks like one. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now this is about the time of year they start get, get going on these, and it was it or a bit late. Is that January sprats? No, no, it's just any time now, really. Now it's going to be too soft. Well, the idea with that little rig I was trying to leave it down, hook a live white and just let it chunter around on the bottom. Well, Wayne's just, Wayne's just wound fishing while we're talking. We didn't realise what it was, but it's a spanking great big white in. Good size, I know he's going to pick that one up. That is an animal white in way. Like a bloody small cod, isn't it? Well, uh, uh, some of the cod that have been caught recently have been smaller than that, but that's a beautiful fish. Wow, well, we. It's the biggest whiting I've ever seen up this end ever. That is a big yeah. whiting. That's big for Cornwall. That's that is a nice fish, yeah. Wow. 
Bloody great teeth on it. That's a beautiful whiting. And you say that would have won competition in your whiting competition if you don't oh, I think that would have won the last uh, few that we've had. Uh, well, I won it last year with a fish half this size, I think, but um, that's a beautiful fish. Wow. Lovely. Eat a Wayne? Yeah, I'll say. What yeah, would you do? How would you eat that one? How would you, how would you do that one? Well, I think I said before, so whiting are, are similar, I think, pout, actually. People mind about pout, but pout are good eating. The key is, get the fillets off them quick. Get the fillets in, in on ice, you know. Chilled, yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's the key. So you get the get them filleted quick, uh, and basically uh, all I ever do with these is uh, egg batter, breadcrumbs, lightly fry them, and they are they are very nice, very delicate, but very nice. And by the time I realised it was a white, it was too late, and, uh, and it fell off. And I was I've got a bigger lead on this one, guys, so the rod's going to bend a bit more anyway, but I think there's something on there. I don't know if I've got my other... I might have that one there. I've moved that up there because the tide's swinging. So it's a bit of all over the place at the moment. Doesn't feel like a fish, but it might just be a live bait potential. Three species on Frank so far. I'm going to ask Wayne, what is this? You will know what this is. It's a huge cluster, but that bait's been attacked by what? Uh, uh, Some anemone it? thing or something? Yeah, it's a living thing. We call them a sea squirt or something. I can't remember what they... I don't know what they're actually... Really That's doing. rock, so he's stuck to the rock, isn't he? Yeah. You can see the way he's sucked up and trying to eat it. Well, they, 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 yeah, it's... Uh, he's got it. I can't remember they used to call them mermaid's tit, all sorts of funny names they've had. I don't know what the real... I won't, I won't be touching that one, <laughs> the mermaid. Yeah, it's weird. He, he was absolutely eating it, though. Back he goes. A bit of interest. Got myself a cluster here. A nice little line to start with, didn't it? Yeah, good bite. That was a fold-over bite. Yeah. Let's move old Frank out the way. We don't want him getting in on the act. Luckily, I've got both my rods up, so... Should be fairly decent this one way. Yeah, could who knows? Ray, cod, eel. I'll sell for the cod. <laughs> oh, oh is that the cod nod? Well, it, it's sort of sluggish. It's a, it's a, who knows? Hmm. Straight up and down, but there's no tide. It's a ray. Oh, it's a ray. Nice spotty ray, ray, is it? Yeah, nice spotty ray, by the look of it. Have a look at this one when he comes in. A pretty one, sees one. They've got nice markings these ones, haven't they? Pretty fish, yeah, lovely little fish. Um, sometimes this sort of eye here is really, really pronounced and people can mistake them for cuckoo rays. Because, you know... That's why they have the cuckoo ray, that eye mark, isn't it, on the wings? Much more pronounced, and they're, they're a different shape as well, but I've heard people sort of say, oh, I've had a cuckoo ray, and you look at the pictures and say, it's not, it's a spotted ray, it's just that that mark, even on a spotted ray, can be really pronounced sometimes. Like an uh, aquarium sort of ray, aren't they? Ones you see in an aquarium, a nice, yeah, pretty nice mark. Look like the uh, a little bit like the um, warm water rays, yeah. Yeah, but he'll go back straight away. Watch him, he'll go lovely. A very, very nice little fish, and straight oh, down. Look at that. Folded his wings and boff. Well, the tide's ebbing now. Got a good bit of flow on the tide. I'll have a decent whitey. Not as big as that one Wayne had, but look. That's a nice eater. And look, there's a stinger hook stripped. He's stripped there and he's taken a big bait. So I've got a bit of a combo bait there, squid and mackerel. We'll see what that's doing. See. And Frank lobs it out there. Distance fishing as well. And over the side, we forgot to tie this on the anchor rope, people. We're going to put it on the anchor rope. It's left over from a shark fit, but it hasn't been used much. So I've got it on the top for a winter pool beagle. It's only going to get tipped over anyway. Well, tides turn around, guys. It's getting a bit lumpy. We've had one decent white in. 
just had another decent look at the size of these. Look, my godfathers. Look at that for a whitehead. And it's not exactly a whitehead hook. He's absolutely throated that. If I can get the hook out, I'll show you. I can't get my hand hard enough. But... That's a size hook, a conga hook, can you believe? Real beautiful fish, that one. Okay, he's off. Well, I just lost the conga, but you can see leaving it too long messing around with a camera, that's what they twist up like when they're on a long time. And that's what he's done. Spun and twisted, a classic conga twist in the trace. So we're down to a five minute warning. We've got some nice whiting to go back and cook up down there. Obviously we won't be cooking them up tonight, but a cold day at sea, but there's still fish to be caught. guys look at the size of these whiting we're packing up now it's ridiculous they are some of the biggest whiting well the biggest whiting i've caught up this neck of the woods that's for sure the size of this one absolutely ridiculous well that was good fishing but you know what i couldn't believe how cold it was i don't think i've been that cold for years but was it worth it the answer to that is yes that is a big chunk of meat there. I don't think I've caught whiting that size, well, for a number of years, I must admit. Now, what I'm gonna do with this one? I'm gonna put some score marks in it. We could take fillets off it, certainly big enough to take a fillet off, but Wayne assures me we could cook this one whole on the bone and then you get all the flavors and the juices come out of the bone. The second reason why I wanna cook it on the bone is because I hate bones filleting. I get bones in there, you're just enjoying the meal, and you start deboning inside your mouth. It just takes the edge off it. So, as my filleting is not particularly great, I'm going to cook this one whole. We're going to bake it in tin foil in a baking tray. I'm going to, well, I've already cleaned it, as you can see, it's all been cleaned. I'm going to put in there some spring onions, some salt, some pepper, and wait for this, not lemon like they normally do. I'm going to be awkward and use slices of lime. Let's get it ready. Just going to put these light cuts in there because I'm going to eat it off of the bone and flake it away. That's the general idea. So I don't want to go right through. Flip it over, same the other side, about an inch and a half, something like that apart. Just go through that meat. Now I've rinsed a lot of the scales off, which you know, are only small scales on these, they're not like hard scales like a bass. But I'll tell you what I will do, I'm going to give that another little scrape with a knife and get a few extra scales off because then we can peel the skin off it. So I've rewashed the fish and uh, just pat it down with some paper towel. Or well, you could put batter in these, you can make your own batter as well, but I'm just going to put all these in inside. Who knows what flavour it's going to come out as. Onions most definitely. And then only on the top some slices of lime. So we're trying lime to give it a bit of a bit of extra, a bit of extra flavour there. I've got to save that in case we want some beer. There's nothing better than having a beer. I'm going to cut these in half again. So there we go. You can up beat a bit of salt and pepper and a crunch of sea salt. And this, you can't really do both sides. But that will, it will go round, it will infuse inside. So, I'm just going to 
pop those inside, pack them and ram them all in there. It's going to be baked at about 190 in the oven for well probably 15 minutes but I like 20 minutes so I'm terrible for overcooking fish really and then just put these wedges of lime in like this looks pretty it does look pretty I have to say at the end of the day I don't really mind as long as it tastes nice and the thing is it does actually have quite a strong smell and people go oh it smells very fishy well it's a fish, but we'll get this one in, but it has a delicate, flaky meat. So, we'll put it in the baking tray like that. There you can see it's on the baking board, it's in the middle of the tray. I'm just going to make like a loose pass with that. Of course, we want to keep those juices in there and retain as much moisture as we can. And hopefully, where I'd normally be frying too much and drying it out, it's a little sealed parcel in there. And that retains the moisture and you get a lot more flavour out of the bones as well. And it is into the oven. Job done there. Can't do any more for about 20 minutes. With this we have some boiled potatoes. We're going to have boiled potatoes with it. They're working away there very nicely. And probably some parsley sauce. The thing is, it, it's keeping it basic. I want to try it really sort of basic. We're going to put, no, it's just, it's a packet sauce, you know, just to perk it up, isn't it? It's one of these packet sauces. We're going to knock that up as well. Obviously some vino with it, a little white wine, so even if the fish is no good, well it will be. Can't get any fresher, caught straight away. So about the last two fish of the day, three pounders, three pound whiting. Right, next job. make this into a paste first, just like this, and it does say add half a pint, but half a pint for two of us is quite a lot, and then it just goes top too runny, too watery. And to be honest, if you had really nice fish, strong flavour fish, white is quite delicate, but you wouldn't need a sauce, but I feel with the white it'd be more of a delicate flavour fish. A little bit of sauce like this might just perk it up. Now you can see that's got good consistency. Then we top off, but we're not going to use half a point, we're going to use about that much. Now keep that thick and then we're going to pop it in the microwave. Literally minutes before that, that fish is done. I'm going to cheat, I'm not going to do it in a saucepan, I'm going to do it in the microwave. Now then you can see how I tease that skin off, it's absolutely cooked to perfection. It just eases the top surface layer of skin, you can see the flakes of meat underneath and if you just flake it up a great big chunk of fish full of juice and moisture from that bone.
So thanks for watching. A little bit of fishing and a little bit of cooking. It doesn't get any better than eating fresh fish you've caught yourself. I don't eat a lot of fish, but I do enjoy whiting. No, you guys know, place are my favourite. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Get both fingers like this. TA Fishing. TA Outdoors, subscribe to both channels, hit that notification bell. We will see you guys next time.